All right, so this is a rear form. I got a non-automotive related video. Very important for homeowners. So I'm down here wailing on my old Vista lights. And I'm like, yeah, I smell gas. I just smell natural gas. And I'm like, the only thing that I've got in the basement here that's natural gas appliances is my Lennox furnace, my Reliance uh, hot water tank, and my old Kenmore dryer. And I just serviced the dryer. So that shouldn't be an issue, and I just checked the lines and everything. Um, so for giggles, I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes of it. I did a little, uh, you know, the soapy water test. Got your bottle of soapy water. And basically you're going to squirt all your joints. I mean, this is common sense, but bam. And then you'll have a lot of fine bubbles. It'll almost look like fuzz if you got a leak. I didn't see nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I pulled the cover off the furnace here. Any leaks? Nope. Checked all the joints, check everything. Nope, 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 nope. No leaks. None. Whatsoever. However, I noticed something I didn't like here. What do you guys see that sticks out to your mind here? Look at the plastic caps of the, the hot and the cold and let's start hot and they got melted. That means I have an obstruction somewhere in the flue. And if you follow the flue here, goes into the wall. I detached it from the wall and fortunately whoever worked on the HVAC before I bought the house they were smart enough to put a liner in the flue. You hear that noise? That's traffic. That's a good sign. Um, when I separated the pipe from the hose I look inside there there's a bunch of leaves and crap. I'm like well I had a bird build a nest or something. I couldn't hear no traffic. Oh, well, that's not good. Moral of the story is I had an exhaust blockage and that's why I was smelling some gas and it was actually burned gases. So what I did was, of course I put the stuff away because the video is an afterthought. Busted out the shop vac, sucked all that crap out as much as I could. And then I set my air compressor on to kill. And what I did was, I simply just got a uh, fitting, male fitting, which you would put in your, you know, your air chuck or your, your um, ratchet or whatnot. So it's just wide open. I ran that hose clearly all the way up the flue as far as I could. You know, it would also serve as like a snake if, if there was a blockage because of debris or bird's nest or what have you. And... I cycled it three times. What I did was I had the air off. I got the compressor to max, 120 PSI. I put the hose in there and I plugged it with a rag. That was awful. Awful multitasking. Plugged it with a rag. And then when I got to 120 PSI, I shut the compressor off. Opened the valve wide open, let it rip. Next thing you know, I'm hearing traffic noises. I'm trying to hold a flashlight too while I'm holding the camera. Let me get my lighter. The draft, the updraft pulls the exhaust right out, which is what you want. So, moral of the story is, Wintertime, our utility providers tend to jack up the pressures on our natural gas, or if you, if you have propane or whatever, this doesn't uh, this doesn't uh, work with you, or wood. I wish I had wood heat, and you know, but it's a long story short. Around Christmas time, it's always a good idea to change your filters, which I already did, and. Uh, Check all your gas lines, make sure none of them is leaking because they like to crank up the gas pressure in the wintertime, obviously to meet the demand of customers. And yeah, it's a little safety tip, it's a hazard, you gotta be careful.